and welcome to another Sigma Tech webinar. My name is Ken Rosario, Project Engineer, and today I'll be going over how to work with remnants in Sigma Nest and how the feature can improve your ability to manage inventory. Before I dive into the feature, let me go over what will be covered in today's webinar. First, I'll cover what licenses you will need to work with remnants, the different ways you can import remnants, how you can manage remnants in your inventory, nested parts on remnants, and finally, how to create remnants from nested tasks. First, let's look into what licenses you'll need to work with remnants. In order to work with remnants, you will need the following packages or modules. From this list, Sigmanest Techno, which is SNX 300, can import and nest on remnants, but does not have the ability to save remnants created from a task. In order to create remnants from a task, you'll need the inventory control module, which is MX1405. Same as PowerPack, SNX303, has the inventory control module built in, allowing you to have full control over your ability to import, manage, and create remnants. In the case of this webinar, I will be using Sigma S PowerPack to explain remnant creation. Now that we've covered what the requirements are, let's import some remnants into Sigma Nest. There are three main ways to import remnants into Sigma Nest. The first method is to use the CAD functionality to draw the remnant manually. Secondly, you can also import a DXF or a DWG. And finally, there is a standard shapes library, which has multiple shapes that can be used to make a remnant. Let's hop over to Sigma Nest to see how we can use these features to make remnants. Now that we're in Sigma Nest, let's go over the three different ways we can import remnants. The first method is to draw the remnant with the CAD menu. I'll go over to the CAD tab, use my drawing options, in this case a rectangle, to create the base sheet size. And then I'll offset geometry to create my L shape. The trim commands to clean everything up. And then finally, to show that I've cut some parts already, I'll use the circle command to create some cutouts. When I'm done drawing my geometry, I can then go back to the workspace tab, select create sheet, and select all the geometry that I would like to use to create the inventory from. Once my sheet parameters window shows up, I can then modify the sheet name, how many are available, as well as other information regarding the sheet's parameters. If I don't like the orientation that my piece of inventory is in, I can use the edit option down here to rotate or mirror the sheet around to make sure that it's in the proper orientation. When I'm done, I can hit the OK button to finish up. The next option is to import a DXF. To do this, I'll go to my DXF menu. I'll then go to my DXF import example. And then use the interactive mapping window to create a geometry from the import instead of creating a part. I'll hit OK to finalize the import click to then drop the inventory, and then finally use the create sheet option once again to build a remnant from my import. The last method is to use a standard shapes library. Just as you can use a standard shapes library to build parts, you can use a standard shapes library to build remnants. And I'll do this by going to my brackets option selecting my L shape or any of the other shapes within our list, define what the shape looks like, and then finally turning off auto create part to then create a geometry that I can drop into my workspace and the create sheet option once again to create my remnant. 
Once I'm done, I can use the park tile to clean things up and then use these remnants to build a task. Next, let's review how we can manage our remnants as well as our other inventory within the sheet library. After we're done importing remnants, we can then view them in the sheet list. Remnants are managed in the same manner that Prime inventory is, so you can search for and view the inventory to see what it looks like and change any information regarding it. But remnants have some extra options that allow you to change the rotation, shape, and even flip the sheet over. This allows you to nest remnants with operators in mind, allowing them to easily drop plate into the machine without needing to worry about location pins and plate orientation. To nest on a remnant, simply make sure that you're adding the remnant to the task creation window, either from the workspace or from the sheet library. If you're using Autotask, this feature in SegmentS can be enabled to automatically pull remnants and nest on them. This menu also allows you to adjust how the nesting engines in SigmaNest handle remnants. This is further covered in our previous webinar, Best Sheet Options, which you can watch now on our Connect site. If you want to handle the remnant generation process automatically, then we can use a nested task to perform the hard work for us. Do note, this process does require the inventory control module. To automatically create remnants from a task, simply enable the feature in the Auto NC window. There is also a manual option where you can fine tune the settings that define what becomes a remnant. Let's go back into SigmaNest to review this workflow. Now that we're back in SigmaNest, let's go over the process of creating a remnant from a nested task. To accomplish this, I'll go over to my task, select on the Nesting NC tab, and then select Auto NC. From here, I can go to the Remnant submenu and define which settings will be used to create remnants. So in this case, the minimum area and the maximum internal to external area ratio. From here, I'll select OK to let SigmaNest apply some tool pathing. And then when I hit the Post button, SigmaNest will not only generate code for me, but will also generate a program that will allow me to create a remnant. If I go back to the workspace and select the sheet list, I can then sort my sheet list by future remnants, which have not been cut yet, and you'll see that my remnant for my task is in this list. Do note, it's going to be in red because it doesn't exist yet. To make this remnant real, all I have to do is cut the remnant at the machine, and then go to Program Update, select the program, and then select Update. This will then update the program, consuming the inventory, and then creating a remnant from that consumed inventory. If I go back to my sheet list, you will notice that the remnant is within the list, which is this remnant here. From here, I can then bring the remnant back into my workspace to nest on further if I wanted to. If I want to do this manually, I can go back to the task, go back to the nesting NC window, then select the remnant button over here on the right side. It'll then ask me for some preliminary settings, of which I can hit OK to, and then it will pop up a window. This window allows me to define the area, as well as the internal to external area ratio manually to automatically generate a remnant, or I can manually select which parts of the sheet become a remnant. So if I wanted to, I could accept the skeleton and then bring it back into my inventory. To save these options, I'll select OK, then hit the Post button, and then recreate the program. I'll then go back to the Program Update window, select Program Update, and if I select the drop-down for the program and look at the remnants, 
you notice that there's both remnants created from that one task because I manually allowed the skeleton to come back into the sheets library. Before I close out this webinar, I would like to review what was covered. Today, I went over what modules you will need to nest with and create remnants, how to create remnants mainly by importing or drawing them, how to use a sheet library to manage and modify remnants, using remnants within tasks, and finally, creating remnants from nested tasks. At this point in time, I would like to thank you for watching our webinar on remnants. If you have any questions, please let us know by either asking them now or by asking our support team. You can reach out to them via our support phone line, our support email inbox, and our Connect website.